We've been looking at right angle trigonometry, in other words, trigonometry that works with right angles, where one of them is 90 degrees. And we were just looking at Pythagorean theorem. I actually love this picture. I found this picture a while ago, I loved it, so I just added this trigonometry, because ha ha ha, he's eating it. So it's like a you know, triangle here, right? It's, you got triangles going on here inside his mouth, hopefully. Right, so you've got lots of fun things going on there. Mmm, pizza. But let's, let's go in and do a little bit more. So instead of Pythagoras' theorem now, let's work with sine and cosine and tangent. So again, these only work with right angle triangles. Well, at least what I'm going to show you here. Um, so these, this little trick right here with how sine is the ratio of something, and so is cosine, and so is tangent, this only works with right angle triangles. Okay, if you don't have a right angle triangle, then you've got to be a little bit more careful. So what we're going to be doing is doing sine of theta. So let's actually define these a little bit more carefully. So we're going to be taking sine of an unknown angle theta. And we're also going to be looking at cosine of some unknown angle theta and tangent of some angle theta. Now, sine is a function. And what I mean by that is it does something. In other words, you can't just divide sine by sine to get rid of sine in other words, uh, and just to get theta by itself. It's sine of something. It doesn't make any sense on a calculator to do the sine by itself. I just want to show you this, so i got to make sure I'm in the right mode first. I'm going to press mode and make sure I'm in degree mode, which I am. So I'm going to quit. Uh, so what I can do then is, let's just say I take sine. Do you notice it automatically, for example, on this one, gives me an open bracket. It's basically saying sine of what? If I just press sine enter, it means nothing. I can take sine of something now. I can take sine of, I don't know, two let's just say and this right here will also be a this right here will give me some answer so i can do sine of something so this could be an angle of two degrees for example to give me this or maybe i do sine of i don't know 90 degrees and then i would get some answer hey that's one i wonder why that is so we're going to be looking at these details i just want to show you though that you have to do sine of something or cosine of something or tangent of something now let's maybe start off with a drawing. I think it helps to have a drawing of our random triangle here. Now it could be any old triangle, so maybe I'll just draw myself a triangle like this, and maybe like this. Hopefully these match. It's supposed to look like a 90 degree triangle. Ah, that's good enough. So this one here will be 90 degrees. See, now it's a right angle triangle, because one of them's 90. And now what I can do is maybe I define this as my unknown angle. Maybe this is the angle I care about. If this is the angle I care about, I'm going to need to know how to label these sides. Now I could call them A, B, C and call them things like that. That's fine. But actually we have nice names for them. We learned this before that whichever one is opposite to the right angle, that's called the hypotenuse. That's the longest side. Hypotenuse. Yeah, that's the hypotenuse. Now, because I drew my angle here, I've got names for this side and this side. But these names now are dependent on where I have my angle. In other words, if I had my angle over here, it would be different. So from here, there is a side that we call opposite. And that's for a reason, because it's opposite to this angle. See, if you're looking at this, you'd be seeing this. So this over here is called the opposite side. At least I'm going to show you a nice little trick here. This is the opposite side. And because of that, then we have a side that's beside it. The one that's not the hypotenuse. Because there's three names. There's one called opposite, one's called hypotenuse, the other one is called adjacent. Because that's a word that means beside, or next to, or near. So this is adjacent because it's beside it. But keep in mind, you could say, oh, that's also adjacent to it. Sure, but that one has a name called hypotenuse because it's opposite to the 90 degrees. In other words, it's the longest one. So in this case, I would draw them like this. Just to show you very, very briefly, what if I had the same triangle, um, but I had this as my angle? And this right here would be the hypotenuse. I'm going to say hype for short for hypotenuse. I hope that's okay. And then opposite to this, this would be called opposite. And this one would be called adjacent. So just so you know, it all depends on where your angle is drawn. Then the opposite and adjacent ones change names depending on where your angle is. But in this case, I actually don't really... Well, actually, maybe I'll just leave that. So this right here is how this works. And now we have a trick then. We have a trick for remembering how to figure these out. Because you see, what if I have some sides and I want an angle? Or what if I have a side and an angle and I want the other side? We have some nice tricks for figuring these out, and it uses these trigonometric functions, this sine, cosine, and tangent. Okay, it's sine, cosine, and tangent. And uh, the trick we have is like this. So some people call it so 
Katoa. Now, if English is not your first language, you probably don't have this trick. Maybe you've learned something else. But I know that I was taught this, at least I am, I'm a Canadian, but I went to high school in the States, and we learned this like this. So, Katoa. Now, this sounds like gibberish, and it kind of is. So, um, I've seen it written sometimes like this instead as well. So, Ka and Toa like this. And this is maybe more useful. And I'm going to show you what's really going on here. So, what, what's happening here? We have this. We have that, see, the S stands for sine. C stands for cos, and T stands for tangent. So, we're going to say sine theta equals something. And we're going to have cos theta equals something. And we're going to have tan theta equals something. Now, how are we going to know which one is which? That's where the O and the H comes in. See, because it says so, ka, toa, see, that tells you that sine is opposite divided by hypotenuse. That's why I kind of like this way, because you sort of see the O is on top of the H. So that tells you it's like, uh, this is opposite. This, this, that's the O divided by H, which is hypotenuse. So this is like a nice way to remember that sine of an angle is the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. And cosine of an angle, we use AH, that's adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's how we would do this. Now you could do these for any angle. You could actually calculate sine, cosine, and tangent of the angle. Now tangent is OA, so that means ta uh, this T it goes TOA, right? So that means it's opposite over adjacent. Opposite over adjacent. Now, like I said, this is not the only way to learn it. There's lots of other ways to think about this, but I like this little trick. Now, it sounds kind of ridiculous. Some people have figured out even better ways to remember this and remember what this means, but I learned it so katoa, so I may as well teach you that same way. That's at least how I sort of remember it. Uh, and in fact, I have a really awesome joke. This is by XKCD. This guy, Randall Monroe, is awesome. I highly recommend you check out his uh, website. It's .com. I don't know him. I'm just saying I think he's awesome. So so here, for example, Los Alamos, 1945. This is when they're designing the nuclear bomb, for example, the Americans. So they say, we have a decision. If we've done our math right, this test will unleash heaven's fire and make us as gods. But it's possible we've made a mistake, and the heat will ignite the atmosphere, destroying the planet and in <laughs> cleansing conflagration. Wow. Uh, question. Just to double check, although I'm 99% sure it's Sokatoa or Kosatoa. Oh, for the love of, can someone redo Steve's work? I don't want to do this test anymore. So they're just joking around that, you know, you got to remember if it's sine, cosine, tangent, or is it something weird like that? So it's actually obviously not this one. It's Sokatoa. Ha, ha, ha. So let's actually try to calculate an unknown angle. So here we've got an example. We've got a triangle, and it's going to be implied to be a right angle triangle here. This looks right angled. And we want to find the unknown angle theta. So it helps to start labeling your, uh, your sides. So which one is hypotenuse? I always start with that one. Which one is hypotenuse? That's the one opposite to the 90 degree. So if you 90 degree, you go, whoa, there it is. This one must be the hypotenuse. And if this one is the hypotenuse, Let's see, well, this right here is the angle we're looking for, so this one opposite to it is called opposite. And that means the other one is then called adjacent. And if we name it like this then, take a look at what we have and what we don't have. Because what I'd like to do then is write down this then. So, so, ka, toa. So what am I doing here? I'm trying to look at, all right, which one of these do I have and which ones don't I have? Do you notice I have adjacent? So I know, I know adjacent, and I know hypotenuse. I know that value is 5. I know adjacent is 4. But I don't know the opposite one. And I am hoping not to use it. So do you see how this is now like your little shopping list? You've got to try to find either sine or cosine or tangent. Which one of them doesn't use opposite? And you can see that that is clearly cosine. So that means I'm going to use cosine. So I'm going to say cos of theta is equal to adjacent and it helps to just write this down, right? Adjacent over hypotenuse. It's always nice to show all of your work so you can tell what you're doing later on. That's adjacent over hypotenuse. So in this case, it's going to be 4 over 5. You say, great, so cos of theta is 4 over 5. Awesome. Now here's the problem, though. I don't want cos of theta. I want just theta. So how do I get theta on its own? How do I undo a cosine? You can't just divide by cos. That doesn't work that way. It's not, it's not a function that does that. 
But uh, there's a nice way to remember it. And a lot of calculators have lined this up this way. Um, I like the TI-84 for this reason because can you see the little sign button here? You can you see in blue it says sine with a little inverse? That tells you that inverse sine undoes sine. Just like inverse cos undoes cos, inverse tan undoes tan. And with the way this particular calculator is lined up, I love it because it also says that square root undoes a square, 10 to the x undoes a log, and e to the x undoes a natural log. So that's really handy. So what this really means for us is that in order to find theta, I'm going to have to say that theta is going to be the inverse cos. In other words, cos minus 1 of 4 over 5. This is how I'm going to do it. So let's just try it on my calculator here. What I like to do is do the part inside the bracket first. So I'm going to say 4 divided by 5, and I'm going to say enter. That way I've sort of I've dealt with this piece. Now I want to do the inverse cos of that answer. So I'm going to say inverse cos, that's a little blue button first here, inverse cos of that last answer. So I can always just go and get that last answer by doing a little blue answer. So then I say that, hey, that's 36.8. So I can say that that's my answer. So theta is approximately 36.8 degrees. It all depends on how many decimals you want to use. You could say it's around 37. It's not exactly. That's why I like to put a little dot to tell me. I've done some rounding. It's not exactly 36.8. But this is. I think it's really useful. Right? You can use this to calculate a whole bunch of nice stuff. So we can actually keep going. We can do some more examples. So for example, right here, we want to calculate this unknown angle. So again, let's start labeling the sides. So uh, this one right here is going to be the 90 degree one. If that's the 90 degree one, then this one is called the hypotenuse. And actually, I hope you're okay with this. I'm going to, I don't feel like writing hypotenuse all the time. I'm going to say hype for hypotenuse. And that means if this is the angle, this one is opposite. So that's up, that's opposite. And that means then that this one must necessarily be the adjacent. Oops, so I'm just going to say ADJ for adjacent. If that's the case, then I got to use either so, ka, or toa. Now try to think which one should I use? Because you could guess, but again, try to use the one that avoids what you don't have. Do you see how I have adjacent, I have opposite, but I don't have hypotenuse? So on my little shopping list here, I'm going to go look for one that doesn't have an H in it. So I'm probably not going to use that one. I'm not going to use that one because they both have H's. They both use hypotenuse. But hey, I've got this one. So that means then I can say that tan of theta, tangent of theta equals. In this case right here, we can say it's uh, opposite over adjacent. So if that's the case, opposite over adjacent, then I can actually calculate it. So the opposite is 22 meters, adjacent is 40. So that means, again, I have that tan theta. Oops. Oh, no, what have I done? There we go. I picked the wrong thing. And I don't necessarily have to do it in capitals. It's usually a lowercase, but it doesn't really matter. So I'll say tan theta is equal to 22 over 40. Therefore, theta is the inverse tan. That's how you undo tangent, because right? I want to get theta on its own, not tan theta. I want theta. So it's inverse tan of this. Now, of course, you can just say inverse tan of this, and you can do that on your calculator directly as well, instead of doing it in the roundabout way I did before. So I can say inverse tangent. And in brackets, I'm going to say 22 divided by 40, just to show you an alternate way, and it still works. Inverse tan of 22 over 40, and I get 28.8. .8. So maybe then I say, uh, that's my angle. So that's 28.8 .8 degrees, because angles are measured in degrees normally. Um, although later on, I'm going to be doing some videos that uh, show that angles can also be in radians. And in fact, that's sometimes a smarter way to do angles. But for now, we're just going to leave things and nice things that people know about called degrees.